Catan Cryoplunge 3, also known as the CP3, is a semi-automatic plunge freezing instrument. It is used to prepare frozen hydrated specimens for cryo-EM. The Cryoplunge 3 consists of four major components, a support column, a humidity chamber, a safety shield, and a cryogenic workstation. The support column located at the top of the cryoplunger contains the ethane temperature monitor, the blotting timer, and the humidity temperature meter. Underneath the support column lies the plunge piston, the humidity temperature sensor, the humidity wand, and the blot assemblies. A removable cryogenic workstation is located at the bottom of the cryoplunger. It contains a temperature monitored ethane pot, a liquid nitrogen remote fill tunnel, a workstation overflow port, and a cryogrid box staging area. Before handling the CP3, it is important to be wearing your lab coat as well as your goggles. It is also important to be wearing gloves and closed toe shoes at all times. If you have long hair, tie it back to avoid interference with freezing. To begin, turn on the power button located on the side of the cryoplunger. Cool the workstation by pouring clean liquid nitrogen directly onto the cryo workstation, including the ethane pot. The liquid nitrogen in the ethane pot will eventually evaporate. It is important to note that we only pour liquid nitrogen onto the ethane pot once in order to cool it down. Next, place cover on top of the workstation. Do not remove for now to allow efficient cooling of tank and to avoid ice contamination. Continue refilling the workstation as needed through a liquid nitrogen remote fill tunnel located on the side of the CP3. Avoid filling the inside of the ethane pot with liquid nitrogen. We will continue to do this until we attain a temperature of negative 170 degrees Celsius. This process takes approximately 20 minutes. Allow workstation to sit approximately 10 to 15 minutes once a temperature of a negative 170 degrees Celsius is established. Meanwhile, open both gas valves to provide pressure to apparatus in order to blot your grid. Take the humidity wand and moisten with hot water. Insert the humidity wand into chamber. Our target relative humidity is around 100. Realistically, a relative humidity of 80 or higher is fine to work with. Insert the pre-cooled blue grid box into the cryo grid box transfer pot. Maintain liquid nitrogen level in cryo workstation above the surface of the grid box by refilling the remote fill tunnel. When ready, carefully condense gaseous ethane into the ethane pot. Use die cutter to provide specifically cut filter paper for blotting pads. Cut as many as needed. Remove blotter from the humidity chamber and use the single blotting assembly as a replacement to maintain the high humidity in the chamber. Change filter paper on the block pad assemblies using the loading jig seen on your left. 
Next, remove pin from blotting pad using the tweezers. Then place pin flat side down onto the loading jig. If you have used filter paper, throw it away. Then place the newly cut filter paper over the pin. Place the protective backer on top of the filter paper. Guide blotter down the barrel of the loading jig and press firmly down to connect the pin. Remove the blotter from the jig. Gently press down on the head of the pin to ensure that it is firmly seated. Make sure filter paper is flat. Now, after the filter paper has been changed, you can reinsert the blotter into the humidity chamber. You can repeat the same process with the other blotter. Load the clean pre-treated grid onto the tweezers. Slide the black grip to secure the grid onto the tweezers. Next, insert the tweezer into the plunge piston and raise the piston. Immediately press reset to close the chamber. Load approximately 3 microliters of specimen onto the grid through the front entry point. Close the lid when you're finished. Rotate plunge piston a quarter turn so that the face of the grid is facing the blotting pads. Make sure this is done or else your grid will be completely destroyed during the blotting process. Next, set your blotting time. Close the safety shield. Press the start button. Wait for blotting and for the piston to plunge. Next, open the safety shield. Press the blue button on the piston to release the tweezers. Immediately transfer frozen grid into cryo grid storage box in the cryo workstation. Close lid on the workstation. Rotate blotting pads to be able to apply sample to another grid. Once you are finished freezing your samples, close the blue cryo grid storage box. Immediately transfer into the dewer filled with clean liquid nitrogen. Now it's your turn to try. Are you ready?